Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and today we're going to begin the topic of algebra. Now before we start looking at the first section of this topic on rearranging equations, I just wanted to take you through the information and equation sheet that's included for this particular topic. Um, so if we open that now, it's positioned at the top of the topic section. And you'll see from that document that the first topic to be covered is rearranging and solving equations. Now, what I've tried to do is simplify this as much as possible. So when we talk about rearranging and, and solving equations, there's some fundamental principles that we must stick by, and there are also some allowable operations that we can do when we solve and rearrange equations. So I'll run first of all through the fundamental principles, and then I'll show you this in practice, and then we'll talk about the allowable operations as well, so you know what you can do and what you can apply on each side of an equation. So there are four fundamental principles. The first fundamental principle is that all equations have a left-hand side and a right-hand side separated by an equal sign. So for it to be an equation, it must include an equal sign, and therefore, by having an equal sign, it has a left and a right-hand side. Now, the second principle is that equations must remain balanced. The left-hand side must always equal the right-hand side. What that means is that any function or any operation we perform on the left-hand side of an equation we must also perform on the right-hand side. Think of it as a set of weighing scales where anything we add to one side we must add to the other to keep it balanced. We could double the contents on the left-hand side but then we would have to double the contents on the right-hand side to keep it balanced and so on. And that principle also applies to equations. The third principle is any operation that's performed on the left-hand side of the equation must be performed on the right-hand side of the equation for it to remain balanced. And I've just given the example there of adding and multiplying the contents in a scale on the left and right hand side. So it's always useful to think back to this idea of an equation being like a set of scales that must remain balanced. We can't allow the scale to tip in one direction or the other by doing any operation to one side that we haven't also done to the other side. And number four there on the, on the fundamental principles is to rearrange an equation for a given variable we need to strip away all other numbers, terms and expression, leaving the variable on its own. Note this can only be done using the allowable operations below. When we start to look at some specific examples of how to rearrange equations, I'm going to use this terminology of stripping away other terms and expressions to leave the thing that we're trying to find on its own. And it's really useful to think of it like that because it helps us to structure um, the equations, but it also helps us to make decisions about what steps to do first in order to get that thing that we're trying to find on its own. So next up we've got the allowable operations. Now these are the things that you can do to each side of an equation, and this isn't an exhaustive list. There are more of these that we'll cover when we look at topics such as um, logarithms. So there are additional ones that we can do. This is just a starting point so that you can start to rearrange and solve equations for yourself. So number one is you can add a number, term or expression to both sides of an equation. Number two is you can subtract a number, term or expression from both sides of an equation. Number three is you can multiply each side of the equation by the same number, term or expression. You can divide each side of the equation by the same number, term or expression. And then these two are a little bit different. You can raise or lower each side of the equation by a given power, meaning you can square both sides. You can square root both sides, you can cube both sides, or you can cube root both sides. And then number six there, this is a really useful little trick when the thing that we're trying to solve the equation for is on the bottom of a fraction, and it's called taking reciprocals. Now we can take the reciprocal of the equation providing we do it to both the left and the right hand side. 